th thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, so great that I can tell the story this early about uh, the digital platform we made for the Anna Frank House. Um, let me tell me a little bit short about myself. I'm a strategist and conceptor at DOOR, the digital agency here in Rotterdam. And um, we try to make um, zines more future-proof with new forms of digital storytelling. And we do so by um, uh, creating immersive uh, experiences in which the visitor play an active role. And we work, uh, for example, for the museum Boymos Beuningen in here in Rotterdam, and right now for the Netherlands Photo Museum. And the last two years, we realized this uh, platform I'm going to show you. It is uh, from the Anna Frank House in Amsterdam. And today I want to share everything we have learned during building this uh, platform the last two years. Um, the platform contains a virtual reconstruction of the secret annex. And this is the, uh, yeah, the structure of the presentation. There's a lot I can tell about this project. It has been a long time to get to the result, two years. Uh, but I will try to keep it a little bit short. Um, I give a short introduction about the platform we have made. Um, I tell you more about the Anna Frank House in general and the assignment and the process we have followed. And after that, I, sh I will share some first learnings. Um, the Anna Frank House, I think everybody knows the place. Um, it has 1.2 million visitors. And online it is even more, it is four, five million visitors. <clears throat> now it's really getting dark. <laughs> um, visitors from all over the world, 200 countries are visiting the platform. And they are staying right now for 30 minutes on the new digital platform, it's a really long time for an online experience. And we can see that most people are staying in the so-called story environment for 45 minutes and 90 minutes in the corporate uh, uh, sector of the, of the page. I have, we have made a short impression of the platform. I'm not sure everybody has seen the website. It is a short impression. We made the website mobile first. Uh, so the video is also uh, optimized for vertical content. Just a short impression, go check it out online. Uh, we won a couple of uh, nice awards last month, the Oscars of the Internet the Webby Award for the platform. We're really proud of that we won this uh, award. Uh, the Anna Frank House in general uh, was founded in 1960 by Otto Frank, the father of uh, Anna Frank. And um, the foundation has three main functions. It's about the museum function, the collection function, and the education function. Um, in the museum, you can experience the whole story of Anna Frank uh, in a really authentic uh, way, and also with videos and quotations and photos. The collection of the Anna Frank house is uh, not so big, but um, uh, the main parts of the collection is about the writing of Anna Frank, of course, but also some artifacts. And they make uh, a lot of research and exhibitions with these artifacts. Uh, the education uh, part of the foundation is really important. They make all kinds of digital programs. 
and to increase the awareness about the dangers of uh, discrimination and anti-Semitism. Uh, they are very active worldwide in 30 countries with 5,000 young ambassadors. And last year they did a, re a really big renewal of the museum entrance and shop, for example, but also uh, the digital platform had to be renewed. And uh, they asked us to, um, uh, you know, how to fulfill the website, and with, uh, for how to fill the mission with the website. And this four um, uh, things were really important uh, to do so. Uh, but the main challenge was to optimize the user experience. Uh, the old website was really outdated and it was not suitable for uh, mobile. Um, and there was a really big ecosystem of all kinds of subsites that had to be integrated in one platform. So the approach we choose is the workflow we usually choose at our projects. It has a discover phase, ideate phase and create phase. And, and within the discovery phase, it is really important for us to get to know the visitor and to create uh, involvement with all, with all departments. Um, we knew from the start that we had to integrate corporate content like museum information and uh, um, educational programs. <coughs> but also we had to, re, uh, to make the story really uh, penetrating as possible with digital immersive storytelling. The left side is about really fast usability to get really fast to the information we're looking for. The right side is really important that we want to stay people as long as possible on the website. So we did a lot of research at first with uh, surveys and web analytics and lots of interviews inside the organization. And after that, we brought all the departments together in one room and we started our co-creation sessions with customer journey mapping. On this photo, you can see people from a collection, from presentation and communication, for example, working on a customer journey mapping. Uh, this method is really handy to get uh, the whole organization looking through the uh, glasses of the visitor, through the eyes of the visitor. We create personas that represent uh, um, um, an audience, uh, for example, a museum visitor from the USA or an online visitor from Brazil. And we're mapping the whole uh, visitor journey before, during, after with contact moments. And uh, every contact moment, we look what can be improved. And under that, we make notations of concepts and ideas to improve that uh, specific contact moment. <coughs> we're going to map it out, and to digitalize it, and print it out in big uh, papers and hang it on a wall. So everybody uh, sees these customer journeys because for us it's really important to think in holistic experiences. Um, we get a lot of uh, insights from it, but the main insight we learned uh, was that there was not enough synergy between the contact moments. And we really wanted um, to make a layered story, less information to more information and use all kinds of new forms of storytelling like video, but also interactive tools to make your own educational programs. Uh, after that, we did a content assessment apart with all the departments to make the left side of the storytelling environment uh, better. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we really want to know which content was important to streamline the website, to uh, make the, go, the clutter go away. <laughs> um, uh, we came from 12 entries to six. And uh, everything that is red and orange on this page is has been stripped down or, or moved with new content. Um, the result was a really small sitemap. The old sitemap was about six of this kinds of screens. It was really big. You could get, really get lost within the website. Um, after that, we brought everybody together and we started exploring how to tell the story of Ender Frank in the Second World War in new ways. Um, and we used this kinds of um, yeah, we call it conversation starter interfaces. And, and we print it out and with, together with the whole, whole organization, we go into explore how to st structure the information in new ways so that people are really engage with the content. Here's the examples of all the ideas that um, came out of the organization. 
And we started to work out with this uh, first ideas. All those insights we use in the ideate phase. And the insights, they were really great. So we had some ideas to get um, these two worlds together. Um, after that, we look, were looking for a core essence, for a brand essence of what we, uh, we, we uh, saw during the research that in all the um, articles about Anna Frank, the, the word impact is used a lot, the impact on the, uh, society nowadays, education, and on the life of people. So we started to work with this word impact. <clears throat> You can hear, it is a photo in this process of concepting and ideating with the whole team, we're sketching, a lot of sketching. But uh, we used the insights from the storytelling uh, sessions as a core. And we knew that we have to work with four uh, sections within the historical content, the secret annex, the diary, profile pages of the people who know which were in hiding and the timelines. Um, second, for us, it was really important to link everything together, to cross-link. That was also an insight we learned during the first phase. And then we make really simple prototypes like this, and we present it to the, the user groups. And it's so simple that every time we, the people uh, react on it, we can adjust it really fast and test it again. It's kind of a feedback loop. And uh, what we learned during the storytelling session that we wanted to create a narrative space. Um, and within that narrative space, we wanted to tell the story with objects. So we make this simple uh, reconstruction uh, about entering the secret endings um, via the bookcase. And when you are in the room of Anna Frank, you can make all kinds of choices. For example, for clicking on the table where she wrote in the diary. And when you click on the diary, you can all kinds of extra information like historical events you wrote about. And we make connections with the timeline on the right side. Uh, also the uh, profile pages of the people in hiding. And um, you go deeper and deeper within the content, also with these kinds of long read pages. Um, a lot of testing, um, most of the time talking and testing all the time. And we make this uh, prototype uh, which, which we uh, brought the corporate content together with the storytelling content. And once again, this was a testing period of about two months uh, with about, I think, 50 people uh, to check out that everything was uh, uh, matches the needs and expectations of the uh, audience groups. Uh, so here you see an overview of the Corporate pages we have made together with organization and with audience groups. On the right side, in uh, more detailed uh, historical um, storytelling environments. And in the middle, I'm very, really proud of it, we make a connection between the historical content and the contem contemporary content um, via uh, so called topic pages. And it is a kind of explanation pages about um, the ra racism. Uh, discrimination and the patterns lying be beneath it. And it's kind of pages are uh, used a lot within classrooms. Uh, everything is documented in a so-called blueprint um, uh, document. And this is a guideline to keep the teams on track during the realization of the platform. Um, that is called the create phase. Uh, it's um, the create phase we go to uh, make an interaction design, visual design, and front end and back end development. And with the interaction design, we choose to make a modular design system that makes it really easy to create pages that suits uh, purposes of the different uh, departments, but also the, um, the needs of the visitors. We make a lot of components like this, and you can build uh, yeah, the pages uh, yourself. Uh, how you like it. <clears throat> so it's a really flexible system. Um, after that, we started with the visual design. And with the visual design, um, 
the actual diary uh, was really important, of course, for inspiration for the color scheme. Uh, but also the handwriting of Anne Frank on this kind of papers with the slanting lines. Uh, this color scheme was also important uh, within the design. And, and we used um, yeah, all kinds of historical content to enhance this, this historical awareness like this. And um, all the components are designed with this uh, consistent uh, uh, color scheme. So all the pages within the website with different kinds of content um, are also very consistent. So it's re recognizable for the users. Uh, we did it also for all the content, for video content. There are about 70 videos within the platform. And um, we made a style guide and video ident for it. And that is also documented in this kinds of um, documents to create a consistent uh, look and feel. Um, after we did this, we started working on the secret annex, the storytelling environment. And we did it together with uh, Forcefield in Amsterdam, and, uh, a company specialized in VR content. And we wanted to create a VR-like experience within the browser. So uh, that also works on mobile. Uh, we learned during the content sessions uh, and the audience told us, give us please a very good uh, map of the house, a virtual reconstruction. We can find the way through the maze of the secret annex. So you can explore the rooms. <laughs> and uh, we, may, uh, we, yeah, we put a lot of efforts to create a really photorealistic uh, style uh, for, the, uh, for the rooms. Because when you enter the museum in Amsterdam, the whole place is empty, but online it is completely furnished. So yeah, you can immerse yourself in the atmosphere of the Second World War online. So um, we used a lot of historical material for the textures and for the light. And the whole uh, place was yeah, completely uh, uh, like it is in Amsterdam. A lot of modeling. And you get these kinds of photorealistic uh, uh, yeah, um, rooms and places. Too. So we can tell in, within those narrative uh, space with objects, the story of Anne Frank life and work, but also the Second World War. And we started decorating the gray rooms like this. This, this is on the left side how it looks when you make it in the, uh, in, in the core, but so is with all the textures and the lighting. We put a lot of effort in uh, creating uh, all kinds of navigation guides. Also tested it a lot with the users. Uh, performance was also really important. It has to be very, the speed was really important because we knew that people in South, uh, South America don't have the same bandwidth as here in Europe. Um, and it looks like this when you're on the website. Oh, uh, um, when you're exploring a room. So you have this narrative space, you're standing in the, in the room of Anne Frank. Um, you saw the, uh, the wireframes earlier, but this is the end result. And uh, you can see that everything we have done is together with the organization and with the audience groups. There's an important reason why their people are so enthusiastic about this place and staying this long. Uh, an overview from the cross-linking, uh, the, the core concept of the uh, narrative space. Uh, above, you're exploring, then you go to the table, and when you click on an object, you get an, uh, background information, but then you go deeper and deeper. And what we have did is that the profile page of uh, somebody who was hiding in the secret annex, combining with uh, research from the Anne Frank house, and research is also really tough to bring that in an uh, engaging manner for people online. But we see that people are going to the depth and staying really long on this, this kind of background pages. So they learn really a lot about uh, the Second World War and Anne Frank. Um, then the first learnings. Um, we see that people are staying very long in this uh, storytelling environment, average 45 minutes. 
but there are also sessions that last for two hours. Um, and we have heard that within classrooms, they're using this as an education tool um, to tell about the story of the Second World War. Uh, but also the character pages, the so-called profile pages, are for average uh, 54 minutes. That's also very above expectation. Um, the, the presenting of the teams, the topics, we started to do this. It was really complex to, do, to make this happen within the foundation of Anne Frank because they're really afraid to bring this kind of content in the open without a teacher between uh, like an, an mediator. But they are standing online right now and uh, we can see that when they are used, people are staying very long and we have heard that they are using this in their presentations at schools a lot. Um, surprisingly uh, was that videos Everybody told us in the research phase that video was important, the organization, but also the young audience groups. But we see that video isn't that much placed as we thought. Um, only 3% of all the videos are played, and 29% um, are played completely. So what people say during these sessions is not, not always what will really happen when you put it online. Just we're uh, concentrating right now to optimize, to bring the video more um, uh, on the spot where you can see it better. Um, desktop versus mobile, uh, we see that um, everybody is saying make everything you make mobile first, um, but um, we can see that the storytelling environment is mostly uh, shown in desktop and used within classrooms. Uh, and this gives the best experience. But uh, when more people going to visit the museum, they of course use the uh, mobile phone and the mouse for buying tickets. And the last point, uh, once again, for us is always to engage the internal stakeholders. It's never too early uh, to start with it. Um, and um, yeah, also in this project, that is one of the key factors that I think this, this platform is uh, a success right now. Um, yeah, that's also I wanted to tell you in short about the platform. I can understand if you have a lot of questions. I'd love to hear about you. Thank you.